Hello, everyone, and a very warm welcome to this um, session for Lives Matter Week. Um, just give me a moment. I'm going to um, share my screen. OK, so um, I'm Margaret Sneddon, chair of the British Lymphology Society, who are one of the um, partners in Lives Matter. And I'm really delighted to be able to share this with you. So with a title such as Don't Just Sit There, it will come as no surprise to you that I'm going to be talking about doing and being active. So to get us started, I'm going to ask you to move a bit. So if you can just move your chair back a little so you can stand up. So stand up and sit back down. Stand up again. Sit down. Stand up. Now, have a good stretch. Take your arms right above your, your head. And then give your hands and arms a really good shake. Shake out one leg. And then shake out the other. And now you can sit down. Now, I have no way of knowing if you took part in that. But if you did, I would bet that you feel just a little bit more energized. Your lymphatic system will have been given a boost. And I've also got your attention. So I'm going to talk a little today about the role of activity and movement for keeping your lymphatic system healthy, for preventing or treating um, swelling of the legs and feet. And I'll be highlighting the British, British Lymphology Society, or BLS, Everybody Can campaign, which is designed to encourage us all to be a bit more active. So we all know it's really hard to get started. Even if you've got no health problems, many of us have experienced swollen ankles, stiff joints, or aches and pains, just because we spend a lot of time sitting in one position, particularly over the last year or so, sitting in front of our computer screen. And we can easily forget how long we've been sitting there for. I rely on my Fitbit to give me a buzz every hour if I haven't been moving but you can always set an alarm to do that. But we know we should move more, but often we don't. Even if we take a break, it's sometimes to move to a softer, more comfortable chair. So at a recent conference, I asked healthcare professionals if they felt they spent too much time not moving or being inactive. Unsurprisingly, 100% of them said yes, so I think we all understand when people seemingly ignore advice when we tell people to move more because we're just as bad at doing it ourselves. I also asked them what proportion of their patients would have better treatment outcomes if they were more active. 75% felt that more patients would have better outcomes if they were able to be more active. So it seemed that doing everything we can to encourage and support people to be that little bit more active is well worth it. There's no doubt that some people have severe limitations, possibly with heavy swollen limbs, they might be painful, um, have wounds or discomfort. But there are things that even they can do with a little bit of modification to suit their abilities. So I'm not talking here about getting from couch to 5K, although if you're able to do that, it's great, you can do it. The focus of this session is more on being motivated to get moving just a little bit more, helping to prevent or reduce any lower limb swelling, and speeding up the healing process of any wounds if you have them. And also regaining a little bit more independence and better quality of life. So what is motivation? Well, motivation is what we experience when the balance tips from being comfortable with the status quo, the things as they are, to being dissatisfied and wanting something to change. When the bother and the effort to change actually becomes more appealing than the consequences of doing nothing. For example, if someone's told um, that they have a, a risk to their health, perhaps even loss of a limb if they don't change their lifestyle, that would be a stark threat. And that would be fear as being the primary motivation. Or it could be that overcoming those mental hurdles and making the effort is worth it 
because it will bring very welcome rewards, enable you to do things that you want, maybe to be free of pain or discomfort. That fear factor might work some people, for some people sometimes, but it also might freeze us into inaction and hopelessness, feeling that there's no point to even trying. So it's my belief that focusing on the potential rewards and what we have to gain is actually much more likely to encourage us to get us going. Meaningful and sustained change is more likely if we have a big why, a really strong reason for doing something. So think about what being more active will mean for you. What will it be like? What would you be able to do? And how would that feel? How good would that feel? It's good to focus on small goals to start with. We're not trying to climb a mountain. Or what do you miss doing that you could do before? Are you just desperate to be able to wear a pair of proper shoes? Or to be able to get out and do something that you enjoy? There is also a misconception that you have to wait until you feel motivated before you get started. To wait until the right time and you're in the right frame of mind. But actually, sometimes motivation comes after starting something new, not before. So if you can't work up that motivation, just try to make that first move, take the first step, and then celebrate even small achievements. You might even enjoy it and want to do more. Getting encouragement from your family, friends, and health carers can also be really helpful. To share, so share those goals with them. You've probably seen this diagram of Newton's cradle, demonstrating Newton's law, which says that objects in motion tend to stay in motion. So just get into that motion. I'm going to share a few ideas about getting that motivation. But first, I'm going to say a little bit about the BLS Everybody Can campaign. And you know, what was our big why for this campaign? Why did we want to do it? Well, the BLS are passionate about making everyone aware of the importance of a healthy lymphatic system. And this is just a very rough diagram of the lymphatic system. And people know that we have lymphatic glands, lymph glands or nodes that can sometimes get a bit swollen if you've got infection. So we know about that. We also have organs like the tonsils and spleen that help fight infection. And we have drainage vessels. And this diagram is just showing that you can have deeper vessels where you can see the nodes and the little black um, dots. But you also have this surface or superficial layer of tiny um, microscopic vessels that are also part of the drainage um, system. And together that works to protect the body against infection, but also to manage the fluid balance around all the body organs and tissues. So although the fluid balance around the body tissues, tissues is a relatively simple in-out process with the blood circulatory system delivering fluids and all the nutrients the body needs, the lymphatic system drains away. And within that fluid, the lymphatic system gathers up any dead or decaying cells, any bacteria or other potentially harmful particles. And it filters it as it passes through these nodes that you saw in the last diagram before returning it to the blood circulation that the body can put out through the kidneys. So to work well, the lymphatic system um, to do this needs to be stimulated by us moving about. And that will stop us getting swelling or edema in our feet and legs. If there's no activity, there is no lymph drainage and edema develops, even in a healthy person. So when we get a slight swelling around the ankles after sitting all day or in flight, it's because we're static, because there's no stimulus from muscles um, or body movement for the lymph drainage system. And once you, usually once you start to move about a bit, it will go down. If somebody notices that it's a frequent occurrence or a permanent problem, 
what it's saying is that your lymphatic system is struggling to cope and needs a bit more help. Now, movement is a great way to do that, but you might also need some compression socks or stockings because that works against the muscles to enhance the effects of the lymphatic system uh, drainage. We want everyone um, to understand that activity is important in helping the lymphatic system, not just for stopping swelling, but it's also crucial in preventing and treating other problems in the lower limb that are associated with that chronic edema, um, such as wounds, because if somebody has a swollen leg, they're more likely, the skin stretch, they're more likely to get wounds and damage to their skin. And if they have a wound, if it's swollen, healing will be delayed. And that's really important. You want to heal as quickly as possible. Someone with um, swelling over a long period of time tends to get dry skin. So it's, again, can be more easily damaged and a risk of a serious infection called cellulitis. So all of this tends to make inflammation worse and it can make people quite ill, debilitated, more dependent, can give a lot of discomfort and pain and maybe have um, unsightly swelling or wounds and can really interfere with their um, uh, quality of life. So if you have chronic edema, it's not normal and should do something about it. it although it works with the, the cardiovascular system in where the flow of blood is driven by pumping of the heart, the lymphatic system and the vessels, which are like veins, are dependent very much on movement of the tissues surrounding it. Um, there's no muscle in these tiny, the green is showing a tiny lymphatic capillary. And what you can see here, there's openings between the different cells, but no muscle. So even though there's fluid all around these vessels, it's only when these tiny anchoring filaments that attach the, the vessels to the skin, to the muscles all around about it, that open these up and allow the fluid to enter. So when the limb is completely at rest, these tiny vessels are empty and collapsed, doing nothing. So we need movement to get that fluid in and draining away. This is a bit of a complicated diagram, but it's, it's showing a cross section of the skin and the tiny lymphatic capillaries are in pale green. And what you can see here is that they're all entwined round about the capillaries of the um, arteries and the, the veins, which are blue or red. And you can see that they are just immediately under the skin. So it's easy to understand that if you damage the skin, it's also damaging these tiny vessels and makes inflammation much um, a, a problem and why it's so important to look after your skin and why it's so important that, that movement even of the skin helps to encourage fluid to enter these vessels and drain away the fluid and the harmful particles. So as well as um, another big why is that we know, we all know that there's evidence to support the benefits of activity on many body systems in preventing disease and injuries and just making us feel generally better physically and mentally. But we now also have robust evidence that exercise and activity improves lymph drainage. It doesn't cause lymphedema as some people fear, as long as you start it slowly and just build up gradually. What you don't want is to uh, do nothing and then have a sudden burst of strenuous exercise. So take it gently. We also know that it reduces um, the risk of getting lymphedema or the severity of lymphedema if it's established and it helps to treat it. And that any kind of activity can be done if certain principles are involved, are, uh, are followed. So swimming, aerobics, uh, pole walking, even things that are quite vigorous, dragon boat racing, yoga um, can be really good for you, again, as long as you build up. Um, gradually. So in the Everybody Can campaign, we started with a few key messages. And we wanted people to know that it was achievable for everyone 
regardless of their baseline fitness, even if they uh, had a difficulty in getting it for chair, you can be a little bit more active. So we've got lots of information providing simple guidance, suggestions and uh, video resources, trying to make it easy and fun. So please have a look at the campaign page and think about signing on as a friend at no cost because you'll then receive regular updates. So I'm going to ask you um, now to do another activity. And this is really just to show how little effort is needed to help that lymphatic system to drain fluid away. So if you just kick off your shoes and put your feet flat on the floor. Wiggle your toes as vigorously as you can. As you do that, be aware of what's moving. I bet it's not just your toes. It will be the skin and the muscle and other tissues round about your foot and ankle and maybe into your calf. You might even feel a slight muscle movement above the knee level at the back of your leg. Now, Stretch your foot forward so that your toes touch the floor about a foot or so in front of you. Replace it back down flat. Stretch out again. Come back flat. Do that a few times. But that should involve some muscle activity of your whole leg right to your hip. So I now have one final exercise, which is a really good one to do if you're sitting a lot or if you're sitting at a computer. So just sit up straight, bring your hands together at the top of your chest. And as you take a long, slow breath in, extend your hands and arms out to the side, going as far back as you can, stretching the front of your chest and pulling your shoulder blades together. As you breathe slowly out, bring your hands back and your elbows forward so that you feel your back is rounded. Do this just again. Big deep breath in and stretch and then back out. Now, if you do that again, you should find that every part of your upper body is moving to some extent. So just think of the impact of all those trillions of tiny microscopic limb capillaries that are being stretched and the fluid that that's making them able to gather in the process. So I'm going to show you now some of the, the materials that we had. We've produced a number of post-ups and leaflets for the campaign. Some are um, geared towards professionals, some are for um, patients and public. And then we added in um, messages about our secret weapon. But that was getting people to think about what everyday things could help them to be active on a regular basis without really thinking about it as exercise. And we tend to avoid exercise and talk about being active and movement. So linked with this, we challenged people to find three minutes when they could do something active. For example, during a commercial break, that might be if you've got a favorite program, so you know you can get up two or three times during it, or it might be those really annoying adverts that you're happy to avoid. Use the opportunity to get up, move around. When a song comes on the radio or when you're waiting for the kettle to boil, can you do some heel raises and stretching your ankles? When you're washing up, you can. Um, how can you move a bit? Can you move your feet? But schedule that activity. I say do it regularly during certain programs or when certain things come on television. This is just another um, example of leaflets about using the radio and doing a bit of um, dancing around your kitchen if you can. So lots of tips, lots of videos, but it can only go so far. To help yourself and to get you um, going, it's really helpful you think about what will motivate you to start and stay more active. What would make a difference to you what goals would you like to achieve? And what's standing in your way? Can they be overcome or who can help? What might be your secret weapons? Can you get support from your family, friends, GP and other healthcare professionals? 
Many health and fitness centres have trained staff to help people with a wide variety of health problems and limitations. Often there'll be an arrangement allowing your GP or specialist practitioner to refer you for six weeks free membership and a reduced membership thereafter. So talk to your practitioners about that and also about what's safe for you to start with. Then be guided by your own body as you start to build things up. There was a great session on earlier, I recommend you watching it, um, Rolf, who had lymphedema, showing that, talking about how it can hurt to start, but it actually hurts more um, not to start, not to do anything. Think about your secret weapons. Do you like music? Do you um, enjoy the radio? Do you have a dog that would love you to take it for a walk? Throw a ball, even if you are chair bound? What would be challenging enough to be interesting, but not too difficult, but something that you enjoy doing or that helps you reach a small goal? For example, getting to go on a special trip or just being more independent. Music works for many people. It certainly works for me. So talk to people. Tell your grandchildren stories about what songs were in the charts when you were at school, when you met your partner, other key events. What makes you want to dance, tap your feet, make you smile, get you singing? Singing gets you breathing more deeply, which is great for the lymphatics. Show your grandkids your moves, whether it's reaching for the stars, a bit of Saturday night fever, or twisting the night away. But whatever. Have fun. Laughter is also great. It jiggles the lymphatic vessels around no end and it also makes you breathe more deeply. But some of you may have heard of making playlists for people with dementia to calm them when they feel agitated. But how about making a playlist of a few songs that are upbeat that would get you moving, even if you are confined to a chair? Set a target on how often to do this and when. Even if you'd only manage one chorus to start with, you can build it up. If you enjoy sport, if you enjoy football, is walking football or even kicking a ball from one end of the garden to the other just as you walk? Can you play games with grandchildren, such as throwing a softball? Hobbies, even that don't seem very active, can be helpful. If you enjoy doing jigsaws, set it on a table at the other side of the room. And then during the odd commercial break, go and put in one or two pieces. Talk to your family about how they can help you, because sometimes they can be too helpful and kind, making it really easy to sit for, still for long periods. So if it's safe, discourage the tendency to make sure you have everything at hand, your TV remote, drink, snacks, phone, etc., so you don't need to move. Having to get up and fetch things can be more beneficial as long as it's safe. But if not, there are lots of things you can do in your chair. If you are able to make your home a mini activity centre a few times a day, going into different rooms, climbing a few stairs, stretching for something, just be mindful of safety. And scheduling certain types of activity in will encourage it to be a habit. A habit. So make it fun, make it easy to start and celebrate any progress. So just, it might be hard to start. It might be even harder to keep it up. A default is always to take the easy option and to not bother. There won't be an overnight transformation. It takes time, but it is time worth investing. And remember that motivation may come from action. So even when you don't feel like it, can you discipline yourself to get started, to make that first all-important move, to go for a short walk instead of collapsing in a heap, a heap, and to keep doing it? But whatever you do, don't just sit there. Be moving even as you sit. Move your feet under the uh, computer table. Get your lymphatics working. You might find it hard to start but you're unlikely to regret finishing. Well, thank you very much for listening to this. I'm happy to take any questions about the um, uh, campaign or about anything I've said.
So just a comment from somebody saying they've just realised that um, moved from my home working desk twice a day. So um, they're asking what is the minimum frequency I should be moving. Um, I think the more often the better. Um, if you have a Fitbit, it will get you to move at least once an hour. Um, but more often is great. Um, doesn't need to be far, doesn't need to be much. Small and often is um, is fantastic. And do talk to other people. There's there's been a number of um, sessions on Lives Matter Week that um, are specifically about moving your legs and feet, about exercise, about and um, feeling better, being active. So please do have a look at um, them as well. Uh, Something said, but how do we motivate patients to move more? Um, I know it can be very challenging. I think again, making it fun for them. I don't know your situation, but if it's if you know the person, it can be easier. If you're going into them home, you can get engaged in that chat with them. Ask them to reminisce about when they were fit, what they did, what they liked to do. The music one is a great one get them to show you your moves and get them to sing their favorite song to you. Anything um, just to make it fun and keep going back to that, asking what they've been dancing to, what, is there anything they like? Just keep going back, encouraging them. Again, making it a talking point and a little bit of fun as part of your interaction with them. Um, but somebody said someday, her husband bought her a large um, bean bag rather than a footstool to raise her legs. Um, yes, um, if you're not moving, it's better to keep much better to keep your feet down uh, up than have them hanging down. But whether they're on something raised or whether they're down, keep them moving. Keep those ankles rotating or stretch your toes up, lift up your heels. That's a great thing to do as well. But any wiggling your toes, as I said, doesn't take too much effort. And if you're sitting, doing upper body stretchers is good because it does stimulate the fat it's generally. And then accompany that with some simple leg foot movements and you're doing a really good job. But once you start, once you're comfortable with things, see what you can do to increase it. Can you get up? Can you stand up, sit down um, every half hour or so? Some uh, doesn't kind of e-watch somewhere. These, all these um, videos will be available on the Legs Matter Facebook page and YouTube. And there's also things on the website and on the if you go to the British Lymphology Society page, it's called Everybody Can, um, under events, there are lots and lots of videos for people at all levels, very gentle exercises, chair or standing, and tips on what you can do. Um, yes. A question here about exercise increasing arterial flow. So does this increase edema and venous pressure, making edema worse? You really have to work very vigorously to um, make that a problem and increase the blood flow. And if you're increasing the, the, the blood flow, you're also increasing the lymphatic pumping. So it should um, even itself out and it should settle quite quickly. But that's one of the reasons why we say don't stop activity suddenly. Just walk it out, ease it out. And as long as you're still moving, your lymphatics will catch up. Your lymphatics are able to work much harder than they would do normally to cope with that. So um, it will, if it's not catching up, if it's not going down, 
then there is clearly a problem. The lymphatic system isn't um, coping as well as it should, and maybe that's the time to go and see about it. But even um, normal activity and up to a point, very um, vigorous activity, you won't have a problem for more than a very short time. Um, so I'm just asking about exercise in the plane. I think all the ones that they suggest you do are, are really helpful. Stay hydrated, keep drinking water, but deep breathing, moving your head and neck is good. But again, those heel raises, the ankle twists, and stand up if you can, walk up and down, go to the loo, but uh, keep moving regularly. Don't just sit with your, your legs absolutely still. And you might want to wear flight socks if you don't already have compression stockings, but just make sure that they fit well, that they don't cut in, they don't dig in at the um, below your knee. I don't think there's any more questions coming up. So I just, um, okay, there is one. Yeah, so I'm talking about doing policeman type raises um, while standing. Um, he's got vancouver's veins, has this caused it? Absolutely not. Heel raises when standing is a great thing to do. Um, anytime you're standing still, there's no reason why you can't do that. I say, or lift up your toes, move your feet, but doing the placement type heel raises is equally good. Okay. Yes, and somebody else is just adding that, that um, those exercises probably keeping his varicose veins at bay, so no reason why I should do it, and I would encourage him to keep doing it. Okay, so thank you very much, everyone, and thank you for all the questions and comments. Um, do look at the website and the other sessions. You've got another day, full day of activities tomorrow, and thank you once again for, for joining the Legs Matter Awareness Week sessions. <laughs>